you know, coming to you live from World Championship in San Jose. Welcome to the Living Legends Podcast. How's it going, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of the Living Legends Podcast, your weekly Flesh and Blood podcast where we talk about all aspects of the Flesh and Blood trading card game. As you might notice here, if you are a visual viewer, uh, I know that's mm. redundant, but yes, hello, visual viewers. But hello. If, if you are an audio <laughs> listener, then uh, you will not know that uh, Bill is not here today. Today, I am joined only by mm. Az from Go Again Gaming. How are you doing, man? Yeah, not bad. And that's all you need. No, I'm joking. I miss you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but Bill, uh, Bill's having fun at a, at a convention. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm doing. I'm doing pretty well actually. Um, had nice. quite a busy week in in Fab. Literally today, I've got this. I just did the Azalea Cult with uh, the 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 chap who top aided the Pro Tour with oh, Azalea. Nice. Um, so for people watching this in the future, you can go and watch the video on demand uh, on Go Again Gaming with Jake Warburton, the baker, uh, as he was known, uh, because Warburton is, is his last name, right? And uh, in England, there is a brand of bread called Warburton. <laughs> so it's like, oh, let's, <laughs> let, let, okay. let's go and get a Warburton loaf of bread. And essentially, that's why his na- nickname is the baker. And the commentator is like, Brian Gottlieb and what have you and Brendan were really running with, ah, oh, it has the baker really got what it takes to, to come to the top, to rise to the top here. Oh, no. Um, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's fun. So, yeah, so that was fun. Um, but yeah, do, doing really well, thanks. How about you? I'm pretty good. Um, yeah. Uh, just kind of like trucking along. There's a. Um, trucking along. Yeah. Yeah, I just, you know, played some Flesh and Blood. I was on your stream on Wednesday, played some uh, Uzuri, even though both of That's us right. were like, both of, both of us were very tired. So we were, yeah. If you want to go mm. watch that back, uh, just keep that in mind. <laughs> keep that in mind. Yeah. Um, and, um, right. but no, yeah, other than that, it's been, it's been, it's been pretty good. Um, nice. I've been, you know, organizing a lot of cards lately. Um, some of them Flesh and Blood, some of them not Flesh and Blood, but, um, yeah, it's something you have to do every now and again, and it? it's just all all piles up. And it's nice to just sort of spend an afternoon just digging through cards and sorting stuff out. It's something that I need to do as well personally, because I've got all of the all my flesh and blood stuff is just in a large box with, in no particular order. So yeah. I do need to figure it all out, put it into like class order and card order, and it's just all over the place right now. It's something I need to do. Yeah, I mostly just need to sort my outsiders. And some scattered other cards that were pulled from other decks. Um, yeah, it's it's sorted for the most part. I just need to like, you know, put all the majestics and legendaries and all that kind of stuff into binders and, uh, you know, where it needs to be instead of just like literal just piles on my uh, on my oh, gotcha. Um, yeah. But uh, That's what I mean, you sometimes you're like your gaming space or like where your computer is. It literally just becomes a absolute heap of just random gaming materials and cards all over the place and you can't even move sometimes without knocking something over <laughs> That's, <laughs> it's, it's getting there it's getting there yeah. uh, so as you might have guessed today uh as and i were just going to be kind of just hanging out and chilling we don't have a ton of specific topics so this is going to be more of a free form episode um yeah Bill, as once again we alluded to, is not here. He is currently at MagicCon Minneapolis, I believe. Uh, That's so right, yeah. Bill, Bill has abandoned us for, for Magic the Gathering. Um, How dare he? <laughs> no, he yeah. uh, I assume he traveled there with like his brother and a bunch of other uh, folks from the, the Spike Beaters. So I hope, I hope Bill is out there having a great time. Um, yeah. I, I was actually thinking, I, I saw uh, Mark Poole posted that he was there, um, like doing signatures yeah. and stuff. And I was like, oh, I really hope Bill... Goes up to Mark Poole, but doesn't ask him to sign magic cards. I ask him to sign a bunch of flesh and blood cards. That'd be sick. <laughs> that um, would be funny, yeah. Yeah. I think Bill did post as well, like um or was it or might have been might have been Kaylee who was going as well, Bill's other Canadian friend. Um but um it could have been Bill, could have been Kaylee, but it, as part of their list. Uh, they put, oh, I'm bringing this commander deck, I'm bringing this commander mm. deck, I'm also bringing Lexi and something nice. Blitz decks. 
Nice. Uh, if it, so, uh, so yeah, it's nice to see that. And yeah, hopefully that'll be funny if he does go over to the booth and be like, "Oh, can you sign this quiver, please?" <laughs> yeah, no, that, that, that'd be great. Sign my mm. plague hive. Um, yeah, <laughs> which, is, which I got my 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 plague hive uh, was mailed back to me by Jim, who I mailed I mailed it to him to get Mark Bull to sign it for the pro tour, and so oh yeah, I have successfully retrieved my my signed plague hive, which is which is very nice. So. I was I was going to say as well because we touched on it on the Azalea cult. I mentioned like um, uh, we were speaking about obviously premeditate and obviously what who's the artist to premeditate Izuardi, and you were getting something done from Izuardi. Is that right? Yeah, you, you can barely see it right here in the background. Oh yeah, okay. It's right there. Uh, yeah. Not not framed yet, so you can see. So for the uh, the audio only listeners uh, in the background, you can see I have some paintings here. These are original paintings from a game called Sorcery. And then I have yeah. two original hand-drawn um, Shikishi drawings from Livia Prima. I have Prism, and then I have Dromai. And then beneath that, I have this hand-drawn drawing, I guess you could say. It's not really a painting. Maybe you call it a painting from Izuardi. Yeah. Uh, Izuardi Therianto. And he did uh, uh, Uzuri for me, which is which is an interesting thing because uh, he's the artist who also uh, drew Arachne, like the, the official hero art for Arachne. Uh, he did not draw Uzuri, but um, I messaged him because I saw that he was going to the Pro Tour. This was months ago, and I and I saw that he did Shikishi drawings, and I was like, "Oh, do you, are, do you do those uh, by commission? Like, can I can I ask you to do one for me?" And uh, mm. he said, "Yeah," and I was like, "Sweet." His prices were about the same as uh, Livia yeah. Prima. Uh, just so you know, it's like about two hundred to two hundred fifty dollars, depending on the size of the drawing. But not for a hand drawn like one of a kind custom thing, I, I think that's pretty good. Um, yeah and um uh yeah i asked him um if he could draw uzuri even though he hasn't drawn uzuri in any of uh -huh. the flesh and blood art yet and uh i was like if you don't want to because you haven't drawn the character before absolutely no worries i'll pick a different character i'll just pick arachne instead either way i wanted like an assassin um yeah and he was like really gung-ho about he was like yeah let's do it i'm like oh awesome like you can draw either young or adult i'll let you pick I like them both, so I'll just let you pick. And he's like, "No, I want to do the adult one. She looks awesome." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah, dude let's do it." So, if, ah, if nice. anyone is curious about how to go about like doing that kind of stuff, like honestly, just reach out to the artist. Like, they're people just like us, and in my experience, they're also very nice people. So, um, yeah, yeah, like worst case scenario is they give you a price that you can't afford or whatever, and in which case is like. No, no big deal. Like no, no harm, no foul. You know, um, exactly. But once again, yeah. expect around two hundred to three hundred bucks um, mm. for, for for something like that. Because um, I um I met uh, Wiz New Tam at Worlds because he was there, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, I was getting some stuff signed uh, for my friend uh, Tom from Big Boss Book Club, and um, he was uh, he was speaking about the film that he watched on the plane. And he was like, "Oh, Shawshank Redemption is mm. is awesome." And I was like, "Oh yeah, I need to re revisit that." But yeah, they're they're lovely folks in general, and definitely recommend if you've got cards and art and stuff that you want signed, definitely go and check them out, support them because yeah, they're lovely. Yeah, and it's all part of their all part of their income as well, isn't it? So yeah, uh, and I also want to mm. give a shout out to all, you know just all the artists in general. I know more than a few of them watch and listen to this podcast, so uh, that's right. How's it going? Yeah. Uh, Hello. <laughs> I, hope you, I hope you're all doing awesome, and I hope you keep up the awesome hard work with whoever you are out there. Because um, mm. uh, I know I know Izwardi listens to this. Um, I know nice. uh, Lidner sometimes listens to this. Uh, uh, Reared and Del Miro, mm. uh, and Sa Sam Yang. Uh, that's the one of the ones that uh, reminded me because uh, Sam Yang messaged me back about being on the podcast. Uh, long story short. He will still be on the podcast. He's very busy. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, eventually. <laughs> sometime, sometime this year. Um, exactly. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So shout out. We've got loads of guests, loads of guests lined up and shout out to all of them who are going to appear on this at some point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so shout out to Sam. So if you're listening, Sam, how's it going, man? Um, <laughs> don't, don't forget to message me back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah please respond to me <laughs> yeah um but uh so I, I, i've just i've just uh i've just refreshed twitter mm -hmm. um literally just now um and uh i think that this was posted maybe 
Yeah, it's posted yesterday from at Mask of Momentum, and then obviously um, Carolina responded, and then Man Sant just responded to it, which is why I've seen it, because it's a, a big, long thread. But apparently there's these Drawstring Legend Story Studios bags. Have you seen those? Yeah, I saw are they, them. Are they from Baltimore? or? I think so. Uh, I saw them because I saw a sales post on something. I don't remember if it was on Facebook or, or, or whatever, but... Um, mm. Someone was selling them with a bunch of cards, and they were selling the the tote bag or the drawstring bag for like forty bucks. And I'm like, eh, I don't want to spend forty bucks for a bag. Um, no, but maybe, I was just like, where have they come from? <laughs> maybe maybe we'll just get one when we go to Worlds or something, you know? Hopefully, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's cool. But, I, I like seeing the more like LSS branded stuff. I imagine stuff like that is manufactured by. Uh, Andy, the same dude who did the, um, he's done a lot of stuff. He did like the flesh and blood socks, you know, the, the crack bobble right. Christmas socks. He's done, uh, um, made your stuff as well. Didn't you? Cause you know, I know he made, um, he made the Fab the Azalea cult t-shirt as well. He made as well. So yeah. Nice. Um, yeah. And I don't, I don't think he did these bottles, but, um, I know he's done a mm. bunch of stuff, so I, w I wouldn't be surprised if it was him. He he uh, famously has made a lot of the uh, like the judge shirts, and he might have made some of the trophies. Um, so he's got he owns like a production company that makes a bunch of stuff. Uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so reach out to him if you want like custom stuff done, I guess. Um, and that's that's an interesting topic and conversation, really. Mo you know, moving on from that is, do we think that uh, at Legend Story Studios will start to make merch because people clearly want it don't they you know like in mass produce like the the big dice and you know the bags and t-shirts and hoodies and it could be something that they capitalize on surely yeah i think at some point they do but uh james every time someone asks about it um and if we ever yeah. get james on uh the show here we can ask him about it too but yeah. uh, every time someone asks about it he always says that their focus is on the card game and then, True. like, making the card game. And that's a very fair and probably smart answer because, <laughs> um, I mean, there's still an indie card game at the end of the day. They still have a very, very small team. And um, making sure the card game is good and, you know, at, at where it needs to be is more important than pumping out, like, you know, tote bags and True. Yeah. Shirt, shirts and stuff. Even though I, I, would, I would instantly buy a Flesh and Blood shirt, like... Like yeah. or a hoodie for sure, but that's that's what I mean. Though it's like the the way they the way they've started and the way that they've ingrained themselves in people's lives, you know, and the fact that they're a hero centric game really has sold their whole sort of mission statement to you. So it's just like you're if you're into flesh and blood, you're in it. You know, whether you like the characters or the actual gameplay or what have you, you are essentially in it. And there's people all over the place that would buy this stuff. And, you know, I would buy an Azalea shirt, which had LSS on it as a, as like a little label or something, you know? Um, yeah, so I, I, can, I, can, I can appreciate that obviously their team is probably not large enough to do that sort of stuff, but they are expanding, aren't they? The casual side as well. Maybe that's part of it. Who knows? Yeah, I was, I was going to say, it, it, it's a little more complicated than, than us just saying like, hey, just make this thing. Because they have to like yeah. <laughs> hire someone to like, or have someone on their team who can who's good at graphic design so they can make something that looks good. Um, yeah. And then they have to go through the processes of like sourcing materials, finding a good manufacturer. I mean, there's a lot of like tedious crap that goes into that. Even though like Andy has made a lot of stuff before, they would still have to go through like, you know, processes of determining what, what type of shirt, for example. Like, so when I made my shirts, uh, Andy sent me like four different types of shirts, like uh, t-shirts. Yeah. And uh, I, had, I like tried them out to see which type I liked the most. Um, so there's just like a bunch of like random stuff like that. Um, well, like it, material, you mean like materials and stuff. Yeah. And then like, uh, and then they have to think about how they're going to sell it. Like currently they don't have a way to sell direct to consumers, right? There's no like flesh and blood online store or anything like that. So they'd have yeah. to be like, okay, is this something that they're going to get through distribution, which is probably not going to happen because I don't even know if us distro does like that kind of merch. If it's only, physical cards or if they actually do like shirt merch and stuff like there's a bunch of weird stuff that goes into it you know uh, just imagine though, if they just imagine if they launched a web store how many sales they would get in the first day would be ludicrous i imagine 
like all the orders that would just flood probably, in. It's just like, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I have mm. a feeling they'll eventually do something like that, but uh, yeah, well, James always says it's that's something they'll do when they're ready. So I don't know. We'll see. Maybe yeah. a year from now. Maybe a couple of years. Maybe a couple of months. Who knows? But um, mm. yeah, I, I do yeah. think it's something they'll, they'll, they'll eventually do. I personally exactly. would like to see inst- I mean I, I would like a shirt obviously or like a, 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 a like a black uh, sweatshirt kind of like the one that I'm wearing it would be cool but yeah um, that'd be nice. what I personally would like to see more is uh, probably probably a request that they, they get more than any other and that is more like print media so I would be super stoked for like another lore book for example or yeah. or, or an art book so like um, there are these old Magic the Gathering art books. It's funny that I'm calling them old, but yeah, I guess they're kind of old at this point. Called like art, the art of Magic the Gathering. So it'd be like the art of Magic the Gathering Innistrad, and it would have like all the art from Innistrad and a whole bunch of lore and a really, really nice hardback book. Um, yeah. And I, I collected all. I, I, I own a full set of all of them. Um, I think they're very nice and very, very cool. And I would love to see something like that from Flesh of Blood. Um, mm. And they could do that like per set or something like that, like you know the art per location, yeah, yeah, like the art of Flesh and Blood Aria, and it has like all the art from various Aria cards and all that kind of stuff, not just from Tales of Aria, but the Aria cards from Welcome to Wraith and the Aria cards from Everfest, and you know all that kind of stuff. Um, that would be rad as hell. Um, and yeah. so, I would like to see that, and I would also like to see um, longer stories. So, like, I, I love the stories that they put out, and I love the lore, but it'd be awesome to see, like, more short stories, like, short story length, um, or, like, just actual novels. Like, that kind of stuff would be rad as hell. Like, I'd be, I'd be yeah, super, that's gonna, super into that. Yeah. That's, what, that's what I was going to say, yeah. Would you want to see it, like, just, like, articles on the website, or would you want physical product? Because, so, again, that would be another thing that they could do. Like, similar to how, like, Warhammer have the, the black library don't they um yeah. with loads of like novels and stuff and people love that as well you know so and just get like really good like really talented like fantasy authors like that oh dude i'd be so into that um yeah. i i like I, I would i would say both that was actually a question that someone asked me during my uh my, my last qa like a month or two ago they asked me if i'd like more lore in terms of like online stuff or like books and my answer is uh and was and still is both i would like both like i think it's good to have both like the 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 lore drops on the website that are free for everyone to read i think is really important so people could just read about the characters in the world but i also think like really deep expanded lore would be awesome like that are just full novelizations of like certain stories that are going on maybe stories that happen maybe stories that will you know happen it doesn't even mm. have to be about like the main main characters. Maybe it's about like you know side characters. Maybe it's just something like fun, you know. Like maybe it's about yeah. like hu- what's going on with like a, a band of hunters in Aria or something. Or maybe about like you know someone ri- rising through the the blackjack ranks. Um, you know, yeah. you know, like just just cool stuff like that. Like the Flesh and Blood has such a cool world that I think they can do a lot of stuff. They could make one about like you know. Maybe a warrior of Volcor who, you know, is torn between both sides of the war or something. There's like so much stuff they could do, man. Um, yeah. So, that's what I. Would that would be sick. I yeah. want more, more flesh and blood, creative stuff. Um, and once again, we know the team is small. This is likely why they don't have this kind of stuff. Uh, they have a they have a small team right now. But as things expand, like um, I would love would love to see more, like. Yeah. Um, oh, can you just imagine like a Brandon Sanderson flesh and blood story? <laughs> yeah, that would be rad yeah. as hell, man. That would be so good. That would be well good. Because like, like Brandon... see... oh, go ahead. go ahead. I was just say you could see like the the hard cover art and everything, couldn't you? For it, and it's just like, yeah, give it to me. <laughs> yeah, dude, you can even get like flesh and blood artists to do like the cover the cover art. Oh, this yeah. is like this is like dream dreamed scenario, right? Like. Mm-hmm. Oh man, it'd be so good. But that's the power. That's the power of what they've created. They've started with. They've started with a game where you select a character, and you know that character has a background and a place where they where they're from and all this sort of thing. So that's the power of harnessing this hero centric game. Is you've already created a world and people are already attached to it. So these things would sell. 
these sort of character and law driven things and that could be turned into anything else like we are doing we are turning it into a D D campaign very very shortly um yeah. you know th this world can be expanded upon in so many different ways um which is just just makes it attractive to so many people so yeah like 100 percent what is in the law book then? Is it is it just like is it because I know on the website it's got like uh, if you click on like locations you have a look at the locations. Is it similar to that? Is it like a page for each place or something? Or no, the lore, the lore book's pretty uh, in depth. And so the lore book, uh, a little bit of history for people who don't know this. So there is a flesh and blood. I think it, it's officially called a world guide or a world book um, mm. that was given to uh, LGSs as part of the original LGS kit back uh, when they were first promoting Flesh and Blood. So this is Welcome to Wraith era. So this book was created before Welcome to Wraith came out, right? Oh. Um, and, and it's funny because at the end, the last two pages include like a teaser for Arcane Rising. Um, oh. Yeah, like Aimshot is in there um, to get like a full, uh. full full art of like Aimshot. But, um, or Take Aim. Take Aim, you mean. Take Aim. Yeah, yeah. Take aim. Um, but... Uh, so it's a fairly robust book. It it largely focuses on the four regions in Welcome to Wraith. Um, and then it'll talk about the regions, it'll talk about the cultures, it goes into in depth into like the societies and like there's maybe a couple little stories here and there. And then it has like multiple page spread of the heroes. So it'll be like, here's Bravo from Aria and this is what Bravo is all about. And then it'll even show yeah. like the concept art for Bravo and like here's Dorinthia and what she's all about and... Um, Yada yada yada. So it it's really cool. The the Savage Lands is, is probably my least the one that I'm least interested in. But the way they yeah. present it in the lore book is super cool uh, because they make it into like this uh, field guide uh, from like someone who is like like researching the Savage Lands. You know, it's like it's like this uh, uh, uh -huh. like a like a it's like Monster Hunter style. Kind of. I'm, I'm thinking of like is it Darwin? I mean, the the, the so it's like they're like categorizing all of the flora and fauna and stuff. Um, yeah, well, that's cool. Yeah, the, it, it's a pretty big, pretty big and robust lore book. Um, <clears throat> and I know a lot of people ask about like LSS making another one or reprinting this one. And um, from what I've gathered from interviews and stuff is that they want to. It's just the same deal that we talked before. Um, I don't think. They want to do, for whatever reason, I don't think they want to do the same manufacturer. Like, I don't think they want to just hit the reprint button. Uh, I no. think they want to do something different. And so to do that, they have to find a manufacturer. They have to find all this kind of stuff. And when they wanted to do it before, they said it was, like, really, really hard because, like, paper was scarce at the time. And it might still be. I don't know. But um, mm. I know it's something they want yeah. to do. And I would be super happy, like, super stoked for more, more of that kind of stuff. Because, um, like, Right now, the only way to get one of those lore books is to be given one as a store. I don't think you can get them anymore like th this way. So you have to already have one, buy one secondhand, or be lucky enough for LSS to like send you one. And I don't think they have very many left. So, like, no, yeah, well, they've been using them as prizes for certain things, aren't well. it? Like, um, they use it for the cosplay in Leal, and they've used it for other things as well. I think the finite yeah. supply that they have left, at least. Yeah, like. <laughs> I've basically accounted for two of them, sort of. So, like, they, Robbie Wen <clears throat> sent me one. Um, and then um, when I was uh, doing, like, a little fundraiser thing, so uh, I, won't, I won't dwell on this too long, but long story short, a uh, good buddy of mine and, like, I was a friend of the Living Legends podcast, even though he hasn't been on there yet, uh, to, uh, the professor from Tillian Community College, was doing mm -hmm. a uh, trans lifeline fundraiser. Uh, it was mostly for magic. Oh yeah, yeah. It was mostly for magic stuff, and I saw it, and I was like, "Dude, I want to." I messaged him. I was like, "Hey, I want to be involved, but I want to do it from like a flesh and blood kind of thing." And so he was like, "Yeah, for sure." Blah 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 blah. blah. And so like, um, long story short, I, I kind of like tossed in like uh, some artist proofs and some stuff, and then some other people kind of joined in, and LSS saw, and they pitched in, and they they um, gave a lore book to, to oh, a random nice. winner. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Yeah. The winner, it was actually, um, oh no, I forgot her name. Uh, I, so I know her Twitter, Twitter handle. I don't remember her like real, her quote, her like real name. Uh, it's Max Ferocity. Um, the, oh yeah. The, the dash Rachel. cosplayer. Rachel. Yeah. That's her name. 
Um, yeah, yeah. I apologize, nice. Rachel, uh, if you're listening to this, <laughs> but I forgot your name. I'm really bad with. To names. be fair, really to be fair, bad. we all we all know her as Dash anyway. She is Dash. Her Let's Dash, be honest. <laughs> her Dash cosplay at Pro Tour was insane. Like her mechanoid, oh, yeah. Nitro mechanoid cosplay was nuts, dude. Um, yeah. But yeah, she ended up winning, um, which is awesome. So I, I just did the, I just did a random, um, you know, random winner, and I, her name popped up, and I was like, oh, I, I recognize that, and I'm like, oh, sweet. So it's, it's a Dash cosplayer. So. That's oh, sick. I'm, I'm yeah. glad. I'm, I'm, what I'm really glad about, like. I mean, I'm glad that anyone won it. It was just a cool uh, thing. I'm, I'm just glad that uh, we were able to contribute to the, the, the fundraiser. But um, the fact that she won it and then immediately just opened the book and was, like, reading it and stuff, I think is, like, awesome. Like, it didn't go to yeah. someone who wanted it to flip it for, like, a couple hundred bucks or however much those things are worth. Um, yeah. So I was, I was pretty happy to see that. I was just like, oh, Bring, awesome. shrink shrink wrap straight off looking into the metric section for ideas for the next cosplay and in in a sense probably probably flipping it to a certain degree because she went on and won the bloody other event because of her nitro mechanoid so just soaking in all that lore and all that knowledge to channel it into a cosplay um yeah that's quality that's awesome i'm not sure if i mentioned it before but she's going to be on a ultimate pit night episode in full cosplay along oh, with nice. two others that um, that sounds annoying um, for, <laughs> yeah. for the people in cosplay because I have played alongside Olivia. Uh, if you don't know who she is, uh, Olivia Gobert Hicks is a very uh, well-known cosplayer, especially in the, the card gaming community for, for Magic: The Gathering in particular. Um, yeah. I think she's also part of like the Commander Advisory Group or some something like that. She does some I think so commandery stuff. But anyway, mm. another uh, friend of the podcast, Olivia. I've played uh, with her at a various like invitational things at events. Uh, she's yeah. always playing in her Prism cosplay. Um, <laughs> so, like, I don't know. Absolute it's, warrior. I think she designs her cosplays so that they're like mobile, like mobile, so she doesn't like so she can actually move around in them. But I can imagine yeah. it's still, still kind of annoying or something. Oh um, god, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah, don't know where don't know where we were going that going with that, but that is this is that is the nature of this episode today, really. <laughs> I think it started with something along the lines of like uh, I don't know the lore book. Lore book, yeah, lore yeah. book, yeah, that's it. Um, oh, it first started with merch, and then, we, then I moved into the lore book. Um, oh but, yeah, bloody hell. I I do want to see, I do want to see more lore books though, and I think mm-hmm. I think it's probably one of the biggest requests that LSS gets. I think so, yeah. God, okay. One thing that we haven't talked about here, and I haven't even talked about it at all on any of my videos or anything, is we're talking about merch, or the topic of merch, are the new Prism statues by, like, Weta Workshop. Um, Oh, yeah, yeah. I want one so bad, but I don't think I'll ever be able to get one or afford one because, like, I think they're only available, for the most part, as prize wall prizes at, like, events. Oh, and, really? oh, okay. and maybe other pricing like i don't think you can just buy them and i know there's very limited quantities produced and as the visual viewers could see is i actually collect figures and so like a flesh and like an official flesh and blood figure would be like a holy grail for me like that's like the holy grail object of my collection would be like an official it would be yeah flesh and blood one especially prism because i actually very very much like prism you know, I have hand-drawn Prism back here. Even though I don't play Prism uh, in the game, I like the character. I, I, yes. I, I, I like her style. And I actually kind of like how... Um, and I, I might talk about this in a future video. It might already be one that's out by now. I don't know. But uh, how mm-hmm. pr- I think Prism's actually not a good character. Like, I think, yeah. <laughs> I think, I think she's actually evil. Um, and I, yeah. think, I think we're going to get that reveal. Maybe in Dust Hold On, but... May, or maybe maybe they'll wait till the, the the third set in the Monarch trilogy, but I have a feeling that um, I don't think Prism's a good character. I'm just gonna put it that way. Even in her new art, like she has like kind of like this almost like sinister look to her. She, I mean, she definitely has like the 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 red eyes kind of thing going on, which which I yeah. dig. But she, I don't know, man. Like I, I I'm I'm calling like a Daenerys Targaryen Targaryen like turn right where she's just like. You know, 
you know, and that and that'll be good, and that'll be great, wouldn't it? From a story point of view, if you're thinking of, oh yeah, righteous angels, ward, you know, these things protecting everybody, and then suddenly she uses that power, you know, for for evil essentially, and just completely flips it on its side. That could be a great turn. Like, and then suddenly, like Vincent is the is the hero because she has to try and do something to stop it and all this. Well, yeah, it, it's interesting because, uh, so like, I can see a situation where like. Maybe in the in the War of the Monarch, um, the Salonian armies and Prism save like a city or something. Could be any city. Could be Aria. Could be Volcor. They save them, and then they're like, "Hey, uh, we we have saved you. Come bathe in the light of Soul." And then people are like, "No, we don't want to do that." And they're like, we "We're like we want to <laughs> we want." And they're like, "Oh, okay, cool. Then die." Like I can I can yeah. see that being a scenario. They're like. Like what? You don't want to believe? You don't want to follow soul? Okay, well then you could just burn in righteous fi- fire, kind of stupid. You know? <laughs> like I can yeah. definitely see that being. Oh, I can see it as well, hundred percent. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and it's always pointed out that like oh the shadow. Um, I mean they're definitely not good because they're like killing people too, like all the bodies and skulls and stuff. And it's like, yeah, I mean like I think it's a situation where ni- neither are really like great. Um, no, the, the I think the point for chain at least is that it's kind of like um, the ends justify the means kind of kind of deal, right? So he's like doing evil things, but it's for the greater good. Like he's gonna yeah. have to kill people now to save the entirety of the world. I think is the whole chain thing that's going on because he he thinks that soul is one of the old ones, and the old ones are here to destroy and, and enslave humanity. Um, like all of yeah. humanity, and so like, you know, I think that's that's why that's why it makes chain and the demonastery kind of kind of interesting. Um, yeah, they're, they're not just like cackling, mustache twirling, evil characters. They're not like, ha ha, <laughs> 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 killing because because <laughs> I can. Like, here I go killing again. Like, yeah, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how it turns out because another thing we can briefly speak about, which I don't think we have done on the podcast uh, so far, is the key art for the stained glass windows and what characters appear in that stained glass window. Yeah. Um, because it, it, in this in this uh, stained glass window piece, you can see Prism leading all of these heroes and armies towards uh, what looks like Solana. Uh, I don't know for what reason this is. It just looks like a cool piece of art. But in the art, you can see certain characters that um, that aren't necessarily part of Solana. Um, and one of the most interesting bits is the bottom, the bottom left corner. You can see uh, Oldim and Lexi in the really? bottom left corner. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so I'll take a look at this. Yeah. So it's the key art. Um, so it's available on Legend Story Studios uh, website. But in the bottom left corner, you can see Oldim and Lexi in the bottom left corner in the stained glass. There is also like a like a Yorick looking bard character as well in the bottom left corner. Um, that it's got the same same sort of outfit as what Yorick's got on, and so it's like their adventuring party from Arya. If you look back at the lore. It was Lexi Oldham and Yorick and a couple of other characters Bri- that were traveling. To- Briar was there too in the lore. Yeah, it could be it could be Briar as well, but it looks like it's the same outfit. Like it's got like a blossom of spring um, on the stained glass on the stained glass window. Where, so yeah, where, that- where is this by the way? I want to look it up. I want to see. Uh, I, I- so it's so it's it's on the retailer retailer assets bit assets. under Mon- under Monarch, and then it's the key art for that. And it's got a big three stained glass windows. Cool. Oh, oh, oh! Retailers, marketing assets. Cool. So yeah, if you're looking at this, go to uh, the Flesh and Blood website, fabtcg.com, and then you yeah. can go to uh, the retailer tab and then marketing assets. Um, yeah, and then, and then you click on Dust Till Dawn, and then you go into the key art for that. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize that the the key art was like full there. I had I had only seen it like in screenshots and stuff of the uh, of the trailer. Yeah. Oh yeah, that that is Oldham, like one hundred percent Oldham. Yeah, and then, and then you're... Bolt, Bolton's pretty obvious. Yeah, Bolton's on the far right. So obviously, Lex... he's part of the legions. That is one hundred percent Lexi there. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, very interesting. Okay, wait. Actually, let me pull. 
you know, we can we can talk about this. Let me pull it up. I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, guerrilla podcasting here, and I'm just gonna bring it up that's on my. What, <laughs> that's what this episode is: guerrilla podcasting. It's literally, yeah. what it is. So I'm gonna bring. Um, uh, I'm gonna download it, and then I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna bring it up in in the screen for all the 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 audio or for the the visual viewers. Yeah, so. and obviously we can exp- we can explain that as I was just doing earlier there. So we've just pretty much covered the the the, the left and right panes. So in the right pane, um, obviously Kel will flash this up in a moment. Is obviously the bolt in which we've just uh, discussed, and obviously in the left pane we've got a couple of Aryans by the looks of it, Oldim, Lexi, and what looks like uh, potentially Briar, potentially um, potentially Yorick, but it is an Aryan. So wearing the Blossom of Spring outfit is what it looks like. Um, so yeah, definitely go and have a look at this art when you can and zoom into it because that's when you're going to be able to see exactly what we're referring to here. Um, there's there's some interesting stuff that I want to talk about, which is why I want to bring this up. Yeah, go for uh, it. DTD, create new. Hold on, give me one second. Browse. I will. I have all my flesh and blood art in folders, like organized, uh, so I can just. Have quick access yeah. to it. All right, it's going to be huge. All right, yeah, there you go. I was going to be like, it's going to take up the entire Bang. screen here. Bang, All right. there it is. <laughs> All right, so it's going to cover at mine and at our faces for a second. But yeah. um, here, let me we'll get a nice little zoom here. So you can Guys, see... Re- re- recap it then, so you can see it. I can't, so you recap it quickly then, yeah, basically. Yeah. So here is, for the people listening or watching, um, but the people listening, I'll describe it. So on the bottom left you can definitely see oldham definitely mm-hmm. oldham like a million percent right here and then you can also see lexi as well um yep. it, clearly she has her bow uh there's a lot of like just nondescript figures here i don't so the, yeah the blossom of spring character is there a million percent um yep. i don't think that's briar because they have black hair in this picture and briar is definitely like not doesn't have black hair um and then uh, we can also see in the middle panel uh, what I believe to be Dorinthia, kind of in the middle, uh, right behind, uh, right behind Prism. And I think next yeah. next to Dorinthia on the right, I think that's probably Shiana. Yeah, definitely, I think so. Definitely a character with like long white hair. So um, so it's Pris- uh, Dorinthia and Shiana. We have a lot of like other like. Well, there's a, there's a character here with a staff too. That's actually interesting. I have no idea who this character is. Standing what, the white robes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is that like, is that like, a, like a magister or something? Like a adjudicate? No. We'll see. I, I, have, I have a theory behind that. So I think this is someone else. Uh, could mm. could be um, a character that we know about. Could just be a one-off, just a random character. Because below them, we also see another character with a staff. So we have two staff users, or you know, magic users, people with staffs. Interesting. Uh, staves right there. And then yeah. uh, on the final one, we have definitely Bolton, like kind of like front and center. And then a bunch yeah. of other characters, including some spear wielders. Yeah. Um, what I think yeah. is also interesting is at the top of the panels, um, uh, in the center, it's just kind of like you have Solana and a bunch of light and what maybe is fire. It's very fiery looking. Um, mm-hmm. But to the left and the right, uh, I think we have six figures. No, no, more than that. We have we have another one here. Four. Oh, there's eight. These are probably the angels. I was gonna say that I thought these were. Pardon me. I thought these were the magisters. I thought that, I thought these were the the high council of Solana, but I take that back. I think these are the. These angels. are the heralds. Yeah, these are the heralds, aren't they? So you I can think... see like Ever Erudition far left. You've got um. So they've got the one with the floating orb. Oh yeah, um, uh, I see. Yeah, there's their edition. The one that sold it on me is the one kind of, uh, sort of center. Not really. They're like the second from the the right. They have that weird kind of spiky crown thing, and that's yeah. the one that Sam Yang did the art for. Uh, I forget the name of the herald. Um, mm. But that's definitely yeah. that herald. And then we also have the one herald of um, justice. Or there's they've got the scales here. So yeah, these are definitely the heralds. Yeah. Like a, like a million. Percent. So, uh, so that's interesting. But yeah, yeah so 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 I, I, as we've seen already, obviously with the spoilers, Bologna is the Archangel of War. Is it Archangel yeah. of War? 
the War yeah. Tune Herald, essentially. So it, I guess that kind of confirms that we probably will get the other angels in that sort of form, the invoke form in legendary. Well, well, not legendary, but well, the, the mechanics could be legendary. I did a video on this recently as well, like with regards to the angels and stuff. Will they be legendary? Because they're like name, comma, title. Do you think they'll be legendary? Uh, probably. Yeah, I think they yeah. will be. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. For, bo for, both, it... for both flavor and for gameplay reasons, I, I imagine. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm surprised you hadn't seen that yet, to be fair. Um, but yeah, it's nice to bring up organically on the podcast and uh, whether it's still covering our faces or not, I don't know. But uh, uh, I, it's no longer. It's no longer doing it. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. So so this I, is... I had seen that art, but I hadn't seen the full super high res mm. image of it. So that, that's good. To yeah. Know. That's good to know. Um, yeah. It's interesting because, like, um, if Oldim and Lexi are down there, you know, uh, I remember James White being on a Fluke and Box interview, and uh, Fluke and Box asked one of my questions, saying, um, "Is there going to be an Avengers type type event which brings all the heroes of Rafe together?" And he was like, "Hold my beer." Yeah. Is well, this it? Is is this it? <laughs> that that is something that we have that I have speculated on for a long time. Um, I mentioned it in multiple videos. We've talked about on the podcast that, yeah, um, yeah I, I think there is going to be like that. That's what they're all setting up. That's that, that's what the the lore is setting up. It's setting up mm. like this big event where every region like comes together um, to in this like big big battle, right? They're all leading to that. Like even the stuff in the pits where it might not seem connected to like Soul and all this the Solana, it, it is because. It, it all has to do with the old ones and the awakening of the old ones. Um, and we, we know from some of the lore that the old one of chaos lives underneath the pits. Like that's, that's where that region, that, that uh, old one is. And each region yeah. has its own like old one. And the whole reason, the whole like plot of tales of Aria is that uh, Lexi, Oldham, Briar and Yorick are like, oh crap, the old ones are coming back. And like Oldham's like, I know I was there. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm old. Um, and so like, they're like, oh, we need to get allies to fight against the, this thing. And then like, that's that's also the Solana lore for like Dorinthia was so, like, oh crap, we need allies like to fight against the monastery and all this kind of stuff. But then the yeah. monastery is like, no, bro, like you are like worshiping an old one. Like, like you are <laughs> one of the you are feeding into this um mm. so like like i think that's where all this stuff is going to you know coincide uh, even even um uh uprising we had the emperor died and with the emperor slain they no longer um quell the you know the rest the the, the sleep the sleeping old one underneath mount volcor so now mm. you know w without someone to um, without someone to uh, you know, lull that old one back to sleep. Who knows? They might wake up at some point. Um, yeah. So they're definitely setting all this up for like this this big battle with like the old ones. And I think, I really think what's going to happen is that uh, Solana sides with the old ones. Like I think what's going to happen is like everyone will, have, will choose their side, and choose who they're fighting with, and um, Solana will end up being like, no, we're going to side with the old ones because. They literally worship one of them. Um, and then prison becomes a big bad, like you said earlier. Yeah. 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 Could be it. Prism, Herald of Soul. It's going to happen, man. Literally, yeah. And she's just like basically Saffir Sephiroth like, at the end. She's like a, just merged into an angel, like floating ominously and just yeah. like, yeah. She's, she, oh, she's going to be, be Sephiroth. Yeah, murder angel. That's basically She's going to be murder angel, yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, I can see it now. And then suddenly you're like, you're seeing like all the characters trying to come together against someone who used to be considered a good guy, and suddenly you got Viserai fighting alongside Dorinthia to try and kill Prism because she's now just literally a god of god of soul or whatever. Yeah, yeah. could be could be sick. Um, you but, have all um, the, yeah. you'll you'll have all of the like scoundrels of like the pits fighting with the good guys because like they just want to be free. Like, yeah. yeah. 
Yep. Yeah, and that, and that, and that's an, that's another that's another great a great storytelling moment is you know seeing everyone have have to come together for the sake of their existence essentially. Um, it's the same with like Avengers Endgame. You know, every, everybody has to be on the same wavelength because half the world has been destroyed. There's nothing you can do about it. People have just disappear out of nowhere. Um, similar to this, the threat level could be at the same thing, and that's what I think makes like mm. unif- unif- unification like this would be awesome it, to see it, it could even be like a like a civil war kind of thing where you have like the heroes like fighting yeah. each other like i could i can imagine situations where like i don't know really what the brutes of the savage lands are, are doing but i can imagine that maybe maybe they have an old god as one of their deities right like a you know the old god of strength or some crap and it's yeah. like maybe it's a situation where like solana used to fight against the the brutes because we have that in the lore but maybe they ally up because they're both on the side of the old ones and so that's mm. where a situation where you have like solana allying with the brutes or something like that against all of the people who just want to you know not be under the rule of these otherworldly gods um, yeah so maybe it's... maybe that maybe that that could be it as well then because obviously before speaking of avengers again before endgame happens there is internal conflict between the people that are uh, that we already know, like Captain America's side versus Iron Man's side. It could be similar to this, where we see, first of all, we see a battle between characters we already know, and then something even bigger than that happens, and everybody has to come together again, perhaps. Um, but yeah, yeah, obviously there's going to be loads of pop culture that influences these you know, these storylines as well, isn't there? So can't wait to see what happens with it. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to it. Um... Yeah. Yeah, I'm always yeah. I'm always really stoked to see like new lore drop, and uh, yeah, um, and you can uh, stay tuned to you know the Living Legends podcast because we're definitely going to talk about that kind of stuff when when it drops. Um, so gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, nice. I highly recommend, by the way, reading up on the current Outsiders lore. I think it's really interesting. Each hero got their own piece of lore that is on the lore page or on the respective hero page. In addition to multiple lore drops, um, you know, in the articles and stuff. What honestly, what I think Flesh and Blood needs to do right now, um, like they could, they could literally do this right now. They just need to have someone who can do it. Is it's hard to find the the lore articles after they've already been written and after like they've been pushed out and there's been like a million organized play articles and then like you know yeah. com- community spotlights and all this stuff and then like the lore just gets buried and it's, it's so hard to find and their search function isn't that great on their website i know i've tried no. i've tried um so what they should do if anyone is listening out there from legend story studios alex any other one at the creative department maybe you could suggest this put a tab on the website that's like lore and you just have all of the lore articles under that mm. one tab so someone who just wants to read on the lore of flesh and blood click it boom here's all the lore articles like yeah you can get really fancy with it and you can organize them by thing that but but you don't even have to do that all you have to do is just put the ones that exist already just put them there just just put them all there um, yeah because like if i if i wanted to find squeaker's christmas like the fact that I remember that it's called Squeaker's Christmas makes it a little bit easier. But if you didn't know what it was called, you'd be like, oh, crap. Now I need to, I'm going to find that Christmas one with Azalea. So you, you type like Azalea and it would definitely not pop mm-hmm. up on the list of the articles. It would be like, you know, top eight Azalea, you know, Pro Tour, whatever. Um, yeah. So like, yeah, that, that's to be fair. Yeah, it's definitely it's, it. It would definitely be a sick idea for them to do that because I already know someone who is within the community is UK based who's actually got a website that does exactly that. It breaks down everything. You can search for any piece of law you want, and this person has um, has collated it. So this is uh, Nathan Keeper of Tales. So at Jump for Roy on Twitter um has made legend legend uh, legendary stories dot net mm. is what it's called so um if you click on that it's it's a very sort of uh bland sort of dot net page you know it's not fancy or anything but it's got like a like an index where you can click world of rafe heroes of rafe and it has like drop downs for each thing so you can do it on nathan's thing 
But uh, yeah, I think Legend Story Studios are missing a trick there with something that could be awesome on their website, which is all fleshed out and looks better and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, the, the thing is, like, uh, so I am familiar with the website you're talking about. I think it's really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do I do recommend it. Uh, I will say um, they're doing it because they're a fan and they love the game and they love it. But at yeah. some, like, they're not obligated to continue doing this. So, like, at no. any given time, they can just stop. Like, they could just be like, okay, I'm done with this. And then just ne- exactly. like, never update it. Which is why I really think LSS should just, like, just do it, LSS. You don't have to make it <laughs> fancy. Like, you don't have to make it, like, searchable by keyword or character or whatever. But just just put all the articles there. They can even be in the order. Like, the same order that you posted them. Like, they don't even have to be in a fancy order. But as long as there's a place where you can just go to the website and then click it and then have all the, the old, pardon me, all of the lore. Um, mm. That would be great because, like, right now it's re- it's really hard to to find it um, outside it of like fan fan websites. Um, yeah, because like, but, I mean, yeah, it's easy to find the character lore that's on the character characters themselves, but like the extra bits of lore, um, like the outsiders stories that dropped that weren't the character stories. Um, yeah, that I it I, I wanted to reference one in a video. I wanted to pick a pull a, pull an image. And it took me forever to find it because I just had to literally scroll through tons and tons <laughs> of articles to find to find the lore article. I tried to search for it, but I didn't remember the name of it was. And then, like, just typing in outsiders doesn't help. So, yeah. Yeah, that would be a cool thing. But, um, yeah. Um, shout out Nathan again one more time because he actually reached out to... Because obviously the, the folks that got um, the weapons as part of the dynasty thing, mm-hmm. me being one of them, um it came with like a letter from um lss that said law on it it was like written law on it so nathan actually re- reached out to all the content creators and said can i have the the law text that was written on your on your letters that's how far they've gone to ac- accumulate this for us but again like you say it's just one of those things nathan could just be like nah i'm not doing it anymore because i'm not getting paid for it i'm not doing this not doing that etc yeah um so i think it could be something worth looking into like officially for sure definitely and you can have all high res images and all this good stuff i mean yeah if they want to go fancy with it they can make it awesome but like yeah i at, at right now i'm just like a bare bones like lore you know lore tab you just click the tab here's all the lore articles like yeah yeah, that that's what yeah. would be cool. It'd be cool if they sorted them too by like, oh, this is by set or whatever. But yeah, yeah. So if you're, sick. if you're listening, LSS, do that, please. Do that. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, but um, well, this has been a pretty free form episode. Not sure how far we are into it, but um... <laughs> shorter, short, currently shorter than normal. We've been going for about fifty minutes or so. Um, fifty minutes. Wow, with nothing. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, we've had loads of loads of cool things, but Yeah. Um so um yeah, are you gonna be attending any uh flesh and blood events coming up? I can basically confirm that I'm not just because it's the nature of full time content creation. Like I, I just don't have time. Yeah. I just don't have time to do that kind of stuff. Um but, uh, yeah, when you when you when you when you full time, it's definitely harder to go to events because obviously not only do they cost you money, they cost you time as well, which in your own business is is money essentially. Yeah, well, um, yeah, it's like it's like one of those things. I mean, people who work hourly can probably relate to it too, but it's a little bit different. Um, but I feel like it ob- is. Ob- yeah. I feel like obligated to like continue to pump out content, and I, I feel like and I know a lot of full time content creators feel this way. It's like you don't want to have too much of a gap in your content because you feel that people are going to get uninterested or forget about you or whatever, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah. you just want to just keep doing it. And for me personally, I just want to be successful. <laughs> like, I think that's a mm. pretty, you know, a relatable thing. Uh, I just want to be successful. And so I, I feel incentivized to just work, 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 work. Um, so. Yeah, that's good. It's like, I, I can't, I can't justify to myself like to pay a thousand bucks to fly, you know, all the way across the you know, other side of the country to go to an event that I'm just playing in for fun. That's just going to eat up all my time, eat up a thousand bucks and yeah. you know, all the, all that kind of stuff where it's all more already, already just kind of like, you know, just, just barely making it work as it is. So yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But, yeah. but what about you as, are you going to be going to any events anytime soon? 
Um, yes, actually, and I think Jim's going to be at one of them. Funnily mm. enough, so because so 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 Jim's going to be uh, well, he hasn't confirmed this yet, but it's likely that he's going to be in London um f uh, at the same time a rtn event is going to be going on so if that so if that is the case i will make the trip to london uh and then play in that rtn event um if jim's going to be there we'll both play um but um how, i think uh, i think i'm i was gonna ask how far away london is from you uh not far not far at all like what uh about an hour on the train that's it oh, okay cool, cool. That's, that's actually like closer than seattle is to me Actually, that's, that's close-ish, yeah. Yeah, Somewhere. it's not far at all. That's, I mean, England is quite well connected. If you if you're if you're training it, it can be quite expensive to get the train places these days. Normally, if I'm going to an event, I will normally get the coach because it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, but um, just to get a train into London, if Jim's going to be there, I'll just do that because it's it, t it doesn't take long at all. Um, so yeah, so if if so if if Jim's going to be there, I will make sure to to go down there and do it. Um, if not, then I'll I will I will be doing probably another RTN in Oxfordshire, which is near me, mm. uh, which is basically my local, even though it's not a local. It's you know forty five minutes. Have, um, my my closest local is about thirty to forty minutes as well. So you know, well yeah, maybe it's maybe it's more like twenty twenty to thirty, but still. Mm. I don't have any no. that are just like down the road or anything like that. There's um, no there's, same. I have to drive a decent amount, which is why it's another thing. It's just like I can't go to. It's it's like annoying to go to like my armories and stuff if I wanted to. Like I, it would be like you know yeah. hour ish of travel. Um, I don't typically yeah. drive, so it'd have to be like Uber or something like that because we we currently mm -hmm. only have one car and it's it's my partner's car and she actually uses it to drive to work. And so, like, for me to do extra stuff like that, it's like Uber, and it's just, like, too expensive. Yeah. I'm just like... Yeah, yeah exactly. So, I mean, you can't do it all the time, can you? But... I only um, do, do pre-release, basically. I, 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 yeah. oh, I never miss pre-release, but um, any extra event, it's just, like, I just can't justify it. It just doesn't make sense. No. Any, doesn't make sense, yeah. Yeah. But, Support, um... Unfortunate, but it is what it is, you know? Yeah, exactly. Can't do everything, but what we what we can do is worlds this year, which would be which would be good fun. Yeah, I'm very much <laughs> looking forward to that. It's gonna so yeah. Just waiting for them to announce where the bloody thing will be. <laughs> Come on, LSS, let's do it. Let's find out. Hopefully, but... hopefully sooner rather than later, because it, we're getting there, man. It's still it's yeah. still it's still several months off, but you know, six months away. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And we're going to be partying hard yet again. Um, but, but yeah. Uh, so, yeah, two, two, two events coming up. Hopefully Jim will be at one of them. Um, well, the second one is the RTN, but it I depends what day it is because I'm also doing the uh, the English restream of the German PTI event, which is going to be, I'm going to, it's going to be an all-day affair on my channel, restreaming their tournament. Uh, and if, if, you're, if you're free early hours of the morning, you can jump on for an hour or so and do some sort mm. of... Commentary of me and Pascal. What day was that again? Uh, so that is a, uh, I think it's a Sunday. So it's the yeah, it's the fourth of June. Hmm. Still got another month. We'll see. Probably. Yes. So we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Um, but um, so yeah, that'll be that'll be that'll be a fun day. I'm just going to be basically just commentating and casting and you know just having a word of a time with the restream essentially me and Pascal. Um, just going to be doing that. So it depends whether it's going to be on that day or the Saturday. I think I think it might be on the Saturday, so I might be all right to do one event at least. Um, because yeah, Azalea looks pretty good right now, and I'm fancy a bit of chance. Uh, my chances at a local event, maybe doing summer. Who knows? I've yeah, also yeah. been play. I've, al I've also been playing a really strange list on Talashar recently. Really? <laughs> with Azalea, with Azalea running Arcanite Skullcap. And I've been I've been winning against Oldims and Lexis with Dreadbore, um, really? and, and and a seventy four card deck, <laughs> you know, m because if you think of how many cards you can put in your deck, you can put you can put as many as you want in there essentially. So I've got six yeah. I've got six pieces of equipment and seventy four cards. So I, my my life my life total, if I choose to block 
basically I want it's like a mid range like a mid rangey deck with Dreadbore and it just sort of backs people into a corner where you actually make use of smaller hands. You block a lot, and therefore, because you've got loads of cards to block with, your life total is massive. So, it, if you can, if you if you can get through the horrible turns of like Lexi, three of a kind, etc., if you can get through those and survive, especially with Quiver of Abyssal Depths as well, you mm. you block with multiple arrows. You can get them back via Codex. You can get them back via Quiver. You know, you don't actually lose anything. Um, so it's, it's it's interesting. I might um, stream it a few times. We'll see, but. Um, I'm just having some fun with it. I also made like a stupid equipment edit of the Azalea characters to what she would be wearing as of well. So that, so that might come out in the next few days if, if the list still p- continues to perform. If it doesn't, I'll just scrap it. But a funny little uh, hmm. little bit of uh, secret behind the scenes on Living Legends podcast towards the end of this podcast, in case anybody else is listening, might, you could potentially expect that deck coming up soon on Go Again Gaming. <laughs> It does sound very interesting. And hey, I'm a fan. If anyone's using Dreadbore, that's pretty sweet. So uh, I'm a fan oh, of that epic. for sure. Yeah, yeah, but Ar- Arcanite Skullcap on Azalea. No, no Skullbone. Just, just for the extra three block because you can, you, can, you can manipulate it so that you're on a lesser life total by like one or two. So your Skullcap then blocks for two. Right. Which is, which is pivotal against... Uh, against some some of the decks like Azalea out there, the other Azalea decks out there, when you've got a piece of two two block equipment on board and the perch grapplers which block for four, plus a tunic if you need to, having it, having that on board as a ranger is pretty good. I've also uh, I'm still running the bullseye braces, but I was thinking about using Hornet Sting just for the extra block. But she's just an absolute tank, like loads of D reacts, yellow sink belows in the deck, pure <laughs> pure spice. It's brilliant. What is going um, on? But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, it sounds interesting for sure. Um, I had a lot of fun. A yeah, lot of fun yeah. with it recently. Nice. Uh, but yeah, that's it really, I think, for today, isn't it? Unless you've got anything else. Arsenal steps um, and what have you. I mean, not really. Um, mm. For like my Arsenal step, it's just kind of like... I've just been... You know, I, I, I tweaked my old Magic channel just a little bit and I might be uploading some stuff oh, to yeah. that um it's called red zone mtg and uh you know i i really don't like wizards of the coast i don't like what they're doing i don't like the direction of the company um but at the end of the day you know what i still have a whole bunch of magic cards and i like playing with friends and so i i came to the realiza- realization that i don't have to support wizards of the coast to play magic i already have magic uh so yeah i can just have friends like as uh and, you know play magic with them and so because exactly. of that, I kind of want to just do some like, you know, casual gameplay videos here and there. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's what I've been doing a little bit lately. Nice. Nah. And that's, that, that's, that, that's all the cards you're sorting out today, right? All your magic oh, cards. I have a ton, <laughs> a ton of like non-bulk just sitting around. And we're talking like good stuff. I counted like 20 something odd fetches and... Shocks in there. There's like three demonic tutors. Wow. There's there's a lot of stuff in there. I mean, it's Holy what happens. Moly. It's what happens when you've been playing Magic since like, you know, 1995 and have never sold your collection. And so I've just uh, I've just accrued tons and tons of really nice cards over the years. Yeah, I I kind of wish I kind of wish I didn't sell my collections. I've sold two now. I've sold two collections. One when I was young. When I was younger, that had like loads of the old cards, and then one within the last five years. Ooh. Um. So yeah, shame really. Kind 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 of regret it, but kind of don't because it paid for the entry point into Flesh and Blood essentially. Yeah. So <laughs> we are back. I don't know if I'm including ass talking for like. Oh man, I, 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 I was minutes. chatting to I, I was chatting to myself about about loads of different things. So you could just leave it in. To be That's fair, good. It's it was... good practice for for YouTube and uh, for for coverage, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I was gonna I was gonna yeah. ask you. So the, the last thing that you mentioned was um you had sold your collection twice actually um yeah so when did you i don't want to talk too much about magic but when did you uh start playing it was it your first card game it was yeah yeah um but the 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 funny thing is like uh it was my uncle that got me into magic um but he he never went to like fnms or you know friday night magic or anything he basically just collected cards 
and made decks for him and his mates to play around a kitchen table. So for hit for him and his mates, he was always playing multiplayer. He was yeah. never playing one v one. Um, so I think that's inherently where my sort of love for card games come from is the social aspect of just people sitting around a table and playing. Um, but um, which is funny because obviously Flesh and Blood is essentially more of a one v one game. So funny how that turns out. Yeah, like for me, Magic. I played. I've mentioned it. Played since nineteen ninety five. Used to play it uh, during lunch at school, throughout middle school, uh, high school. Yeah. I played in the Super Series, Junior Super Series, competitively. Um, in college, I played here and there, not not really competitively. Most of my time was spent uh, with with Robin or playing World of Warcraft or playing yeah. or like uh, you know doing actual schoolwork and a bunch of other stuff. I was in a band, yada yada yada. But um, I still always played Magic here or there. And, um, like for college, for example, every time a new set would come out or not, not every time a new set would come out, I would say maybe like four times a year or so I'd invite a whole bunch of friends together from my college, from just friends who were in other, other cities, just, um, you know, old, old uh, high school friends. And we'd do something we called the drink and draft where we would draft and get completely drunk and just oh, have nice. a great time. And we would, um, no one would really pay attention to the, the set, so it was always really fun going into it. Everyone was almost blind going into it every single time. Um, and we're talking sets uh-huh. like the original Innistrad, original um, Zendikar, up to Rise of the Drazi. These are the sets, uh, Alara Block. Um, these are the sets that we did the drink and draft for. So, you know, to date myself, to, so you can guess when I was in college, uh, those are the, the sets that were new that we would, we, we would do. Like my buddy Matt would yeah. do. He would just pick up a couple boxes on his way to um, to my place, and we'd always host it at my my place. Um, and uh, mm. we would w- the best part is we get drunk, we we'd play magic. It'd be great. Uh, there's no prizes or anything. Like who, no one cares. Like maybe we'd maybe have like a couple packs prizing at the end if we had a, a bo- some booster packs left over. But yeah. you know, depending on how many people showed up, you know. And then um, we would. Uh, have a big multiplayer game. Usually, in the the, the next the next day, we would have just a big multiplayer game playing with our draft decks. Uh, so this is way before Commander even existed, and we would just yeah. play a big a big multiplayer game, um, and it was just a lot of fun. That's what you know how I played Magic for a lot. I did, I did play competitively, like I said, in the Super Series and stuff. But um, mm. yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, and I, I never sold out, uh, partially because I was lazy, but partially because I was just very attached to my to my to my cards um yeah so i still have all my cards from when i was like a kid like i said i have, I have a revised um demonic tutor that I, that I still have and you know my volrath stronghold that's worth a lot these days um that's just kind of beat up i always i always took sort of care of my i never everyone always jokes about how they played with cards on the asphalt you know uh on yeah. the sleeved but the i pavement. actually yeah I actually sleeved my cards, and I'm I'm just kind of like that kind of person who I like to keep my things to looking nice, and so yeah. I always sleeved my cards, and we always played on like a an actual table. Uh, didn't always play with play mats though. I didn't have play mats back then, so it was just no. like it was just you know with a tablecloth or something like that. But yeah, but um, yeah, so yeah, same yeah, nice. Yeah, so even though uh, I absolutely hate. Wizards of the Coast, uh, for many, many reasons. Um, yeah. I feel like they're, it's almost like they're trying to be the most evil company in tabletop card gaming, you know? But, um, yeah, it's weird, at, isn't it? at the end of the day, like, you know, I'll grab this stack of red cards here. Like, I don't need to buy wizard stuff to have fun with, with these cards, you know? Um, yeah. what do I got in here? There's a foil Dragon Master Outcast. It's probably not worth much anymore. Uh, same with like this foil Sarkin the Dragon Speaker from Tarkir. Probably also not worth very much anymore. It's funny how the prices of things like shift around where cards that used to be fairly valuable are just not. Um well, that's the uh that's the power of that's the power of eternal formats, isn't it? Like um like Commander, for instance, any card in Magic's history can be played. And I imagine it's similar to Flesh and Blood as well. Like, you know, the, the these games are eternal. You know, all the formats are eternal, main yeah. ones at least. So, I think I think one of the big differences for Magic though is that their Wizards of the Coast is really pushing Commander 
but yeah. like kind of dump dumping all over like their actual eternal formats like legacy uh, so you see a lot Probably. of like le- legacy staples and stuff that aren't, aren't worth very much anymore at all like um yeah. where's my green pile i don't know if it's at the top let's see if if my tarmogoyf is at the top Ooh, i do have some other nice stuff here so like here's some japanese uh planeswalkers with the anime art they're pretty cool uh yeah but, nice. but stuff like here we go so here, here's a creator hoof behemoth the stupid thing is worth a ton of money. And why? Because this card is really good in Commander. Uh, that's why this this thing's worth a crap load of money. Um, yeah. Yeah, dude, I have some nice... I really need to sort through. I have some nice stuff. Here's another pile. There's a Force of Vigor and a Azusa and an Exploration. But anyway, I was trying to get to my uh, Tarmogoyf because Tarmogoyf is a card that used to be worth hundreds of dollars. And I think it's worth like 20 bucks now. 20 to, yeah. 20 to 40 bucks. And it's because yeah. like... It's it's been you know maybe power crept a little bit, but also like just not a lot of people play modern and legacy and stuff anymore. People play commander. Nah. Um, so you know the the tarmogoyf that I have is probably just going to go into like a Canadian Highlander deck or something like that. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just just a shame that they've you know they left they left their sort of pro tour circuit on the on the on you know on the floor and love it looks nice yeah they left it all they left it all on the floor and then focused on just the casual side of it and that is ultimately hemorrhaged a lot of a lot of players to uh to other games like flesh and blood for instance um yeah but the yeah. the sad truth is is like they don't care they don't care about no, those players at care. all they they only care that they're like bringing in more players than they're losing and they just want people to buy their stuff. It's just buy, 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 buy. Like they don't care. Yeah. They don't care if about the fans. They don't care about that kind of stuff. They just want you to buy their crap because they're going to push out a new, a new thing next month. And they're going to push out a new thing the next month after that. And it's just, you just buy it, just buy it. Um, yeah. It's one of their philosophy of like, um, you know, this, this product's not for you. It's a, a famous thing that they've said before. And it's like, yeah, they don't care. Like, they just want someone to buy it. Um, God. So, yeah, that's that's it's a sad that's a sad thing. I I mentioned this in my Discord, but I saw uh, like they're doing a Commander Master set, and they shared like the new or not new, but like a new foiling for one of the Lotuses. Uh, this like the Commander Lotus, I forget what it's called. Not gilded, yeah. is it not gilded Lotus? But whatever it is, it's the command the Commander jeweled jeweled, jeweled Lotus. Lotus. Yeah, yeah, and it's like a, it looks really pretty. The foiling looks nice. It's like textured, and then I, the, the, all the comments on the tweet were just complaining. Not not about the card. They're just complaining about other magic things, and I'm like, oh, it's such a sad state, right? Like, yeah, it is. Like, if if Flesh and Blood did that, like, oh, check out this new cool foil card for Flesh and Blood. Everyone would be like, oh, sweet, that looks awesome. Can't wait to get it. Mm. No, for magic, yeah, all complaining. Talking about Pinkertons, talking about uh, it's going to be a Pringle, talking just like complaining, just all complaining, like, like, uh, yeah, I feel I feel sorry for like people like Vince and and obviously Professor and stuff like they're they're so rooted in in that game and there's so much negativity. I was just like, I wonder how it's like affects them sometimes. Like their game is just constantly under attack and their the company is just constantly screwing sh- shit up all the time, like. But, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, long story short about all this this magic stuff is that yeah. I might be making some magic videos on my magic channel, Red Zone MTG, but it's just going to be playing like for fun with friends. Um, yeah. Sometime Commander, sometimes maybe if I can find some friends who will play Canadian Highlander with me, maybe Oathbreaker, maybe Modern. I actually have a Modern deck. I have a Modern Reanimator deck. Um, but <laughs> yeah. like, that's what, it, that's what, that, that's what that's going to be. Um, uh, and probably, yeah. probably very infrequent. I don't think I'll be talking about magic news or anything like that because frankly, I don't care. <laughs> um, no. and also like, it's just depressing crap anyway. It's just like, what evil thing has Watsy done now? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's always nice to, you know, I'm sure Bill's having a, a good time over there because you know, you still, you still need to you still need to palette cleanse. You can't just play yeah. one game all the time. You need well, to palette cleanse a little bit. Some people can. Like, I was going to say, Magic players would disagree. But then also, I think some Flesh and Blood players would also disagree because 
there's a certain contingent of flesh and blood players who are actually ado- adopting a very like magic esque mindset where they're like only flesh and blood, nothing else ever. Like, which is fine, uh-huh. which is totally fine, especially if you have a budget and maybe you just you don't have the capacity for it. But yeah, true. Um, sometimes people can get mil- militaristic about it, and that's when it starts getting a little grating to yeah. And maybe you send the wrong message to other people, right? I yeah. think that I think being like that might send the wrong message to potential new players too, because you want to be very welcoming, right? And if the new player yeah. already plays another card game, you don't want like them to join Flesh and Blood and have a lot of Flesh and Blood people crap on their other thing that they like. I don't know. Exactly. Um, yeah. People should but, just be, um... people should just be more open about things. You don't have to play all the games, but just be cool with it at least. Like, come on. Yeah. Exactly. And luckily, our, luckily, the community has not evolved to that stage yet. I've, um, I've seen some things on Twitter. Some people are getting that way, but you know, hopefully it doesn't. Hopefully it doesn't uh, stick around. Hopefully people can have a more open mindset about things, even if they're not interested in other things. You can still be open-minded. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So nice. That's. That's that. <laughs> Absolute um, Legends Weekly MTG. Nah. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> nah, not, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. I won't even. I don't even think I'll be open uh, uploading anything magic related on on Red Zone Rogue. To be honest, I was thinking no. about. I might like make a post that's like, hey, if you like magic, maybe check out my other channel. I'm doing a game gameplay with Az. Um, yeah. But, you know, other than that, I'm not gonna make like a video or anything. No. Um, it, yeah, like I, I saw something that to, to ask actually right before the podcast started is that like just magic content on this channel never does well, um, and I think that's for multiple reasons. But um, I'm cool with that, which is why I would mm. uh, I'll upload the other stuff to the other channel, which inexplicably has a bunch of videos with over ten thousand views because people are like rewatching all of my Oathbreaker stuff and all my yeah, old, old Commander videos from like three years yeah. ago. Which is kind of funny. Um, <laughs> so fantastic. Yeah. Anyway, that's that. Love flesh and yeah. blood. Love flesh and blood community. Um, it's actually really nice to to know how great the flesh and blood community is. After like kind of like taking a peek at Magic recently, um, flesh and blood is just like in such a good place in terms of community. I mean, like obviously, there's not like you know. 8 million players worldwide like there is for Magic or whatever the number is. But um, the people who are here are, for the most part, awesome people, and the community is great. Um, so Yeah, and it's, it's 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 at that stage as well. Like, you know, there's so many po- pe- new people, will be so many new people coming into the game that the community is so well established, and there's pillars of the community all over the world now, and we won't we won't stand for garbage in in the community. Um, so uh, it, it is it is good that everyone rallies behind each other. And like, there's a a video uh, that Goblin Reserve made that was like they went round the 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 um the pro tour venue and like chatted to different people and a lot of people said oh the community is the best thing community is the best thing people are the best thing similar to when i did the sort of worlds uh thing when i did the worlds thing uh, asked people about the uh, what their favorite part of worlds was a lot of people were saying same thing community um so yeah it's a better a good a time as ever to get into the game so if you're what if you listen to this this far and you still haven't played flesh and blood what are you doing <laughs> get involved yeah especially if you Honestly, like if, if you're at that point and you're intimidated about Flesh and Blood and you're like, oh, I don't want to play this hyper competitive game, just know that um, Flesh and Blood, it really seems like they're taking actions to make it a lot more like new player and casual friendly. So I think now yeah. and going forward, it's just going to be really, really easy and good to enter the game. So absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Take, take the leap. It's a great game. It has a great community, great art, great lore. Just. Yeah. So it's just awesome, yeah. And just a great, and and just one that one of the best podcasts uh, ever released, Living Legends podcast. Yeah, the we'll have, to, we'll, we'll have to start opening with like the number one flesh and blood podcast. We, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't yeah. know if that's actually true, but we do get some pretty good. We do get some pretty good numbers, both uh, audio only and uh, 
and for the the video version so what what we'll do is when we're, when we're at worlds this year we'll we'll get james white to be like welcome to the number one living legends podcast the number one the world's <laughs> the number num- one flesh and blood flesh- podcast. <laughs> yeah oh yeah we have to do that that would be funny i don't, I don't know he'll, i don't know if he'll he'll agree to that um actually <laughs> i mean mm. i mean we're so far into this episode now uh we'll see if anyone's even listening at this point but um yeah. I actually want to ask James to do that when he's on the podcast. If if he's ever going to be on the podcast, uh, I'd yeah. like him to do a new a new intro for us, a more a more generic one because the one that we have, he's like coming to you live from uh, World plus, Championships, yeah, yeah, World World Championships, San Jose. Um, so I'd like to get him to just do an, a, a generic one, just like a, yeah, yeah. Welcome to the Living Legends podcast or whatever. But it would be it would be it would be quite funny if we could do a different one each year. Like when we when we all see him, <laughs> when we all see him, I mean, uh, that could be a thing too. It could be. A it thing. could be a thing. Because uh, yeah, we do we do do some you know unique stuff on on this podcast. You know, it's 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 a podcast for the people, you know, and the players, but everyone really. Yeah. Um, as well as well as that, we uh, we get on all uh, all aspects of LSS's operation on here as well. Not just James, but everybody else um so that's that that's a really big thing that you know i we and we have focused on is just getting um just people from lss in general because lss is more than just james white and i think james Mm -hmm. white would heavily agree with that you know it's it's a it's a team effort and i think in order to see the big picture of flesh and blood uh it's important to capture all aspects of the game of the people who work on it uh at lss everyone from you know, uh, Alan Hale at the organized play team to Joshua Scott, the the rules and policy manager. Um, we're going to have uh, artists on. We're going to have, um, we had Chris Bewley on before. Maybe we can get Alex on here at some point and he can talk about how he has changed, yeah. up, how he's changed up the the content space for, uh, That'd be cool. for Flesh and Blood. And so I think, I think we're the only Flesh and Blood podcast that has only had LSS guests. Um, all of our guests have been from Legend Story Studios, even Ian, who used to work at Legend Story Studios. Um, That's right. All of our guests have been there. So yeah, and uh, we're gonna continue continue that trend. Though I think we might break the trend when we have the professor on here, but I don't know. He, yeah, he is he is making or he is uh, collabing with LSS to make a product. So I don't know if that's gonna count. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll be able to say that uh, all the guests uh, either work at LSS or has collaborated with LSS to make a product. How about that? Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, so, yeah. And that, that, that's, by the way, when, when, I, when I do plan to ask uh, Prof to be on here is uh, after his product is announced, he'll come on here and we can talk about it. Um, Sounds good to me. We've already, I've already talked to him about it. It's, we're going to do it at some point. So. Um, Lovely old job. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, lots of exciting things to look forward to this year. And uh, yeah, I just thank everyone for being here, for listening to the podcast, um, yeah. whether you are an audio listener or a, a video viewer. Uh, just thank you for being here. Um, you know, I, I wasn't sure what to expect of the podcast when I first kind of pitched the idea to Az and uh, Bill, but I think it's it's become one of my like, you know, mainstays. It's like one of the the weekly things that we're always I always look forward to, even if we have nothing to t- talk about like today. <laughs> so um, yeah, and yeah, how long? How long was the episode? Like looking at the OBS. Uh, well, I was in the restroom for a little bit, so yeah, like an hour. Yeah, but that, that, that's one of the best parts when you just <laughs> when you just hear me chatting to myself or like speaking about your the, the room that we can see in front of us and stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, I have, a, I have a lot of crap in here. Some things uh, I need to clean up. Some things are, are nice. I like my I yeah. like my my art wall. Which will be yeah. expanded uh, in, in the future. Like it's one of those things that's like, you know, we talk about going to worlds, but if Livia Prima is going to worlds as well, then I'm definitely going to ask her to do an art thing for me, and Another so I one, can, yeah. so I can have the art thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Fantastic. Yeah. So. Yeah. So thank you all again for uh, for being here, and uh, as uh, where can the good folks out there find you absolutely yeah so uh so i'm as from go again gaming you can see my little logo up there today there we are look um bit of self-promotion on kel's channel we're he um but um 
but yeah, so go again gaming and then go again gaming on uh, go again gaming AZ on Twitter. Uh, post a lot of things on there, and as we discussed fairly earlier, there might be a, a new sort of wacky azalea thing out there soon, or at least the picture and the idea behind it because it looks cool with her wearing an Arcanite skull cap. Um, but um, yeah, that's it really. Thank you nice. very much for listening. Yeah, my name is Kel, also known as Red Zone Rogue. You can find me everywhere at uh, Red Zone Rogue, mostly at YouTube or Twitter. So if you're somehow listening to this and uh, you didn't know that, well, there you go. You can, you could, you could find, <laughs> me. you could find me there. Um, and also, uh, if you want to check our magic stuff occasionally, Red Zone MTG. But like, I'll be honest, man, I, I don't know how often I'm gonna upload to that thing. Like, I don't we'll know. See. We'll see. <laughs> it's it's just really like a thing where I'm like, hey, I kind of want to play magic, and then you know, I like making videos, so. Just do both. Might as well just record it and upload it and see what happens. Yeah. Just do both. Just have some fun. First match. Exactly. Uh, I'm playing Maelstrom Wanderer, and Az is playing... Uh, I forget. Siona. Siona. I, was gonna, I forget her name. She's like an enchantress Wonder Woman lady. So. Yeah, she's quality. So, yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Fantastic. So thank you all for watching, and um, we'll see you next yeah. time. See you later, everyone. Cheers. So for the uh, the listeners at home, Cal has just taken a um, a break right now. I'm not sure whether this is going to be left in, but um, an emergency bathroom break. And these things do happen. You know, you're talking away, and suddenly you just need to you just need to go. You just need to bust. Um, but um, yeah, speaking of magic, I have had and sold multiple collections. So I'm not sure I'll tell Cal about that when he returns. But um, basically, just have nine commander decks now. Ten commander decks, if you if you also uh, if you also count the Tyranid um, precon, which I think is pretty good. But I just leave it in the box essentially because I think it's a good out of the box experience. It's very thematic, very flavorful because every card has like its own unique art based on the War Warhammer Forty K universe. Um, so yeah, enjoy playing with that deck actually as well. Tyranids is all, always something I try to make a custom collection of. Um, so, uh, and there was actually on Reddit, there was like a large, um, a large sort of custom Magic the Gathering set of 40k commander cards, which was always good fun to play with. Um, but, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And then sold all my, all my other cards, which basically paid for my entry point into Flesh and Blood and obviously haven't turned back since. Hence why I'm appearing on this very podcast on this very show right now. And you're listening to my voice even though I'm speaking on my own. So thank you very much, everybody who's made it this far. Hashtag lovely old job if you're still here. And uh, Kel will return before the end of the podcast. Uh, but at the moment, I'm just looking at into his room uh, from the uh, from the video visual uh, uh, viewers. You can see that it's just me on my own here. Um, and obviously you've got Kel over there. Well, no Kel over there right now, just a awesome backdrop. Uh, for the Red Zone Rogue Studio. Look at that. That is this very seat in front of us that Red Zone Rogue sits in. Wow. What I would do to sniff that seat. Holy moly. Look at all those cards in the background as well. Look at that. He's got a whole absolute tower of power, he likes to call it. Fantastic. All those boxes on the top as well. All those Japanese figures in the background. You know what I'm talking about. You've seen the Red Zone Rogue background before. I don't know whether Kel's going to leave this ramble, this absolute as ramble in the podcast, but why not? Let's make up the time. We have, we've only been chatting for about 50 minutes or so, and today's episode has just been a load of breeze between me and one of my best friends in the Flesh and Blood game. That is Red Zone Rogue. He's still there in the toilet right now. I can't see him. I can just see, obviously, the door frame, as you can see on the podcast now. He hasn't returned yet, but I can expect him any moment now. He is taking longer than I anticipated, so maybe he's having a number two. We'll, we will see very, very shortly. Probably not going to ask him the question, but hopefully he leaves this in anyway. It's quite cool. Um, but, yeah, it's, um, it's a great day, and... Uh, just loving life. I hope you're loving life as well, Bill, wherever you might be out there in a big wide world listening to this or watching this back. Hope you're having a great time playing Magic and Kel is returning right now. So this should be uh, this should be cool. I've heard the dog lead, maybe. Is that Potato? Potato? Is that you? Where are you? I heard, I heard some sort of noise. I'm pretty sure you as the audience heard that noise as well. Oh, there's another bit of noise. I think it's the dog. It's the dog. It's got to be. 
It's got to be. It's the dog, surely. More scuffling around. More scuffling. But still, if you're list if you're watching this, there is still no movement on the screen here. We're just looking at the uh, at the famous chair of Red Zone Rogue, but hearing some form of scuffling in the background that could be the dog. But I'm sure we'll find out very very soon. But yeah, ultimately, Flesh and Blood in a great place right now. Looking forward to Dust Till Dawn. It's going to be awesome. And uh, obviously, we've seen the stained glass window HD art. So it seems like we're going to get support for characters that don't exist within the sort of War of the Monarch line. And it makes sense because it is a um, supplementary set for Flesh and Blood as well. So it makes sense uh, that we are going to see support for the other characters, uh, regardless of whether they're sort of in the draft, the Monarch draft or not. Um, it's going to be interesting to see to what capacity that uh, entails, because obviously Dust Till Dawn is going to be, or the War of the Monarch pre-release is going to be uh, Monarch draft, Monarch sealed, but with potential packs from Dust Till Dawn. But that suggests to me that you can't actually play the game with just the Dust Till Dawn packs on their own. So that still suggests to me, and with the art coupled in with this as well, that we probably will see support for all characters again. Um, and uh, we were discussing this on the Azalea Cult briefly, uh, so go and check that out on Go Again Gaming when you can, that hopefully, um, with all this illusionist, light illusionist, prison coming back support, hopefully the Rangers do get more six attack arrows that might be harder to play, or even if they're like two or three costed, perhaps, maybe just give us more sort of six power arrows that we can use in our decks for synergy purposes rather than using things like cnc and find owls fighting spirits and the other poppers which are like the only the only arrow that we have at the moment which is a popper is battering bolt so maybe give us extra arrows that we can use to pop phantasm that would be nice please but we will see. Obviously, Dust Till Dawn's coming very, very soon. A couple of months' time. It's only a few months away now. Spoiler season will probably start very, very soon. Well, June. Uh, we do have a dog noise. Okay, so it's a bit of movement in the Red Zone Rogue household right now. Um, but, um, but yeah, uh, we're, still, we're still flying solo right now. We're still flying solo here. Still waiting for Red Zone Rogue to come back so we can close this episode off. But I hope you're all having a great time. Uh, wherever you might be out there in a big wide world watching this or listening to this back um, i hope you're having a great day what are you doing let us know in the comment section below um, because it's a big wide world out there and I, I've, I always love podcasts i always love listening to them when i was working in a warehouse um, maybe a couple of years ago i was working in a warehouse job uh, after taking a step back from sort of sales uh, career and all that sort of stuff now in i'm in property sales now if anybody cares at this point but um I took a step back from that career and just started working in a warehouse for a couple of years. Um, and uh, podcasts were just the thing that got me through the day. Um, so uh, please let us know what you're doing and how and when you consume the Living Legends podcast. I'd love to know what you're doing right now. Let us know in the comments below if you're watching this on YouTube or if, you, if you're not watching this on YouTube and you are listening to it in your ears, then go and check out the YouTube and leave a comment on the video on Reg Zone Rogue's channel. That would be awesome um but yeah maybe we could do an as podcast because i've just sat here speaking to myself for the last 10 minutes but that's what i do on go again gaming anyway so if you haven't checked out go again gaming already please go and check that out um i've started to upload a lot more regularly now with thoughts that just suddenly pop into my head um so i've started doing more sort of thought provoking in the moment style videos where i just sit down recently i have sort of installed like a pseudo -y green screen obs sort of thing like sort sort of like how you can see this right now if you're watching the audio ver uh, the video version um trying to make the videos more sort of interactive rather than just me sat in a room if i do have raw random thoughts for one day um but yeah, um, life is good. I hope everybody everybody's enjoying themselves. And uh, and yeah, uh, cannot wait for Worlds this year. That's going to be awesome. Uh, it's a shame I couldn't go to Baltimore, but you have to pick and choose your battles sometimes. As Kel said, you know, time is money, money is time. And um, it's, it's just one of those things. You do have to just pick and choose what works best for you. And luckily for us, and obviously I'm UK-based, Worlds is going to be in Europe this year. I don't think they're going to do a U-turn on that. I think they've obviously they obviously confirmed that Worlds is going to be in Europe this year. So they can't just say, "Ah, oh, no, sorry, Worlds is in Japan instead." 
It's still going to be in Europe, which makes it easier for me to get there. Um, so you can definitely expect me, Kel, and Bill from the Living Legends podcast. Bill's not here today to be at Worlds, loving life, and I cannot wait for it. I just can't. I just, I just want them to announce it already, so we can start planning it out with a squad. Um, probably going to be travelling with uh, obviously Living Legends. Uh, probably going to be uh, Ian from Right Time Gaming, as well as Jim from Fabtisy Cards, as well. Um, there he is. There's Kel. He's. Uh, I just saw him. If you're in, if you're watching the video version, you just saw him right there. Um, but he's still keeping me waiting a little bit longer uh, before we uh, before we close off the Living Legends podcast. There he is. Hello. He's come back. Can you hear me? I can sort of hear you. Ah, I've I, I, I've I've been I've been. Oh, okay, he's going. <laughs> just spraying some sort of substance in around the uh, the Red Zone Rogue household right now. And uh, obviously, he's asking the dog what is going on, what is what, what's Potato doing. Um, but yeah, I don't know whether whether Kel's going to leave this in, but I think he should. I think he really should. When he listens back to this, he should actually leave this in. There, there we go. Look at that lovely old job. We're getting a dog now. This is well and truly the Arsenal step. <laughs> she she peed right there. Oh, okay. I, I was I, I was literally speaking to myself the entire time. So you could you could just leave it in. <laughs> Just leave it in. It's funny, um, but yeah, I, I heard I heard the dog rustling around. I was like, oh, there's a little bit of movement going on here. <laughs> I heard the lead. Yeah. Um, she. Uh, yeah. I took her out before we started the podcast, but you know, I was going to the bathroom. She's like, you know what? I'll join you on the floor. <laughs> She's usually pretty good Fantastic. about that, but yeah, no, there was a bunch of pee right there. So. Oh well. These things happen. That's what I have the spray for. Yeah, but we're so, back. 